Welcome to the Supernatural with Laura Maxwell on Eternal Radio. In these programs, we will hear the true supernatural accounts from those who try various spiritualities. You shall tell the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Tonight's guest is Stephanie Fruji, ex psychic medium who practiced the New Age for about 30 years. She is the author of Christianity Decoded and has spoken on many radio shows. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Laura. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing really well. I'm, I'm thankful to be here. Oh, that's good. I'm thankful to have you here. Can we start off, Stephanie, by you telling us a little of your family background? Was there any faith in your family? Uh, I grew up, um, we started out, um, my dad's side of the family grew up uh, Catholic, so I attended a Catholic school and church when I was very young, and then as I got older, we went to a Baptist church. Um, So my parents are believers. Um, They in no way had any influence into, you know, me becoming involved in the occult. I, I was raised in the church, but... I was raised in religion and not necessarily faith. Yeah. And so do you feel that in a a sense that actually put you off? Absolutely. And put you off Jesus and and the Bible? Absolutely. Um, I've always had a problem with religion, even before I became a believer. And now that, um, you know, I, I did accept Christ into my heart and, you know, I have a relationship with him now. Uh, I'm still very turned off by religion in itself and the separation of denominations because in a Christian faith, you know, we believe in in one God and we believe that that Jesus was God incarnated into flesh, you know, to offer salvation to anyone who believes and the separation of denominations and religions for me and what I observed, I, I still have a problem with it because it ultimately kept me away from knowing God personally growing up. Yeah, I understand that. I, I hear that from a lot of people too. And, the, you know, they say religion can give the idea that, that God is angry at them. And, yeah, I, 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 get, I get what you're saying totally. So when you were a, were a child, Stephanie, or... or as you approached, what what age were you when you started to get interested in the, the supernatural and what kind of things happened? I was about, <clears throat> I was very young when I was interested in the supernatural because I perceived things um, from a spirit, in the spiritual realm since I was a, a young kid, probably about five years old. I didn't necessarily know what I was perceiving at that time, but as I got older, um, I was about nine years old when I started noticing that I had, um, I guess, quote unquote, psychic abilities. And then I was very heavily into horror movies, like scary movies. Yeah. Um, I was very drawn to those. And then when I was about 15 was when I started actually researching and studying witchcraft and the occult. And then, um, I actually started practicing on a daily basis when I became a massage therapist. I went to school to get licensed for it. And a lot of stuff that they taught us was Eastern philosophies, Eastern holistic medicine. And a lot of the new age occult um, was tied into a lot of the teachings. So yeah, yeah, we did a lot of um, study on subtle body energy therapy, shiatsu, um, Um, kundalini yoga, you know, getting in touch with your inner self, your higher self, and and being able to naturally perceive the spirit realm, it was just natural for me to dive deeper and and go into my own studies of of psychic development and and things of that nature. Yeah, I understand that. You know, I've, I've heard as well that nowadays a lot of massage therapy, it does involve the, you know, the spiritual, the supernatural. It's not just using hand techniques on the body but it's literally like 
asking healing spirit guides to come and help and and that, oh, yes. kind, of, yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. Oh yes, contacting the um, people's quote unquote spirit guides was a was a daily thing for me with my clients. Um because the, the spirits would come through without me even asking really and, and um they would just start speaking to me about certain people and their life events and and then the more that I started practicing, you know, doing that on a daily basis, basis I got involved in, in um, tarot cards and numerology, astrology, and it just it it became a daily habit for me contacting the supernatural realm. Yeah, and and how did it actually start, Stephanie? Did you begin by meditating? Did you open yourself up to spirits? What was the catalyst in the beginning? Um. In the beginning, they naturally came to me, but as I connected with it and opened to it, I would intentionally do it by praying, and I would pray. I would start out my prayers by saying, God, goddess, spirit, source, masters, teachers, and loved ones. So I was praying to multiple gods, sure. thinking that I had found the high, you know, the highest truth, but um, yeah, turns out I, I was very deceived. <laughs> So, so really, that kind of prayer w- was, in a sense, being put out there to to any spiritual beings that that would hear it. It was kind of welcoming anyone, and really, even though at the time you wouldn't probably have thought that because it wasn't directed to one particular god. Right. I I, I just opened myself up to any spirit that wanted to come because I I assumed that the gods that I was praying to. Um, we're loving and you know that Satan comes as an angel of light and until I really got into the word of God and got saved and had the Holy Spirit I, I couldn't see through that through that veil sure I understand that you know I, I was the same and I, I prayed prayers like that and I totally believed all the so-called spirit guides were good and, and loving and yeah totally totally believed it when I was younger oh, too yeah. I was watching one of your testimonies earlier about how when you started noticing that um, um, that the spirit guides and the dead relatives that you thought you were contacting had turned against you. And that's when it kind of raised a red flag for you. The exact same thing happened to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So please, please do tell, tell us more about that, Stephanie. Um, you know, where there times, I'm interested to know where there times, you know, like for me and my mother, when we were practicing the New Age and, and spiritualism, sometimes really scary things happened that where you could see a slight warning bell, um, but we tended to kind of just ignore that and carry on. Did you ever have anything happen while you were practicing um, that was frightening or that struck you as being odd or unusual? Oh, yes. I was actually almost killed. Um, the, in the New Age, they promote a lot of numerology, especially the number 1111. And it was November 11th, and I can't remember if it was 2011 or 2012, but um, the guy that I was seeing at the time, him and I drove over to Dallas, Texas to see a friend of mine. And I had gotten licensed online to become an ordained minister, and she had asked me to um remarry her and her husband so we were all into the new age and we were like wow it's 11 11 and you know we're gonna marry him you know at 11 11 p.m so we're booking it over to dallas trying to get there and on a major major highway it we were running late because the traffic was so bad but it was a four-lane highway and we didn't make it to their house at 11 11 but at 11-11, you know, my life and his life was almost taken. We were in the car in a four-lane highway, and we were going about 75 miles an hour, and all four lanes were packed, and my tire blew out, and it was only by the goodness of God that we did not get killed and kill other people in a, in a massive pileup. It was literally, I'm, I'm, I can't even... <laughs> Yeah, I can't even exaggerate. I, I mean, I'm not exaggerating. It was literally like inches away where my car stopped from. I barely was able to pull into this very small, like median lane, and 
it was it was one of the scariest things I had ever um, ever experienced because I, I, I've never really been that close to death before. Um, but that's you know at eleven eleven we're trying to celebrate the one of the highlights supposedly of the new age and the whole ascension theme that they they promote and we're in support of love and light with all these good intentions but you know those gods couldn't and didn't protect us um i'm not sure if they were actually responsible for that but i know that the only reason that that we didn't die and die that day was because of the you know the most high god i know that his hand was on our life that day because it was just it was too close of an encounter to be considered otherwise yeah i totally agree with you and, and it's it is interesting how you know so many times when doing things in new age if something dangerous happens and backfires on us you know it is a shock at first to for us to realize um, you know that things are, are dangerous and did you oh. ever have sorry oh I'm sorry go ahead um, I was going to ask did you ever have anything happen like a spirit guide turn nasty towards you um I think well I've seen I've seen demons and, and whatnot and my daughters have um I suppose they have the prophetic anointing on their lives as well because they've been able to see the spirit realm on and off since they were babies. And um, when I was involved in the new age, um, I, I can go ahead and call him the love of my life. I truly love this guy. And, and you know, I, there's not a day that goes by that I don't think about him. But I was very heavy into into contacting angels in the new age and whatnot. And um, he committed suicide uh, just very randomly he just he walked out of our house and walked on the highway and just shot himself right in the head oh i'm so sorry and, yeah and i know that you can relate to and i'm sorry about your mother too i i can't imagine you know losing my mother like that it's it's um suicide is it's one of, it's something you really can't put the pain that you experience into words and this is one of the main dangers of the new age movement is it invokes demonic activity, whether the person practicing it believes it or not. There are too many testimonies of believers and non-believers alike that are suffering, you know, experience and heavy depression. People are committing suicide and, you know, people are sitting here going, why? And it's because through this new age movement and this, falsehood of love and light we're we're voluntarily invoking demonic activity into our life um like two days before his name was steve and and two days before steve went and shot himself we were we were laying in my bed i was reading a book and i had given him one of my witchcraft books that he was just flipping through and laughing at but um all of a sudden my bedroom door opens by itself and you can just feel this evil just hateful angry presence just walk in and it walks right in front of my bed and walks right over beside me and i'm talking the hairs on the back of my neck was standing up yeah. and steve steve's beliefs at the time he didn't believe in anything spiritual he believed that when you died you you know went into the ground and that was it he didn't yeah. believe anything and so it took him by surprise as well because I, I looked at him and i didn't want to say anything and he was like, do you see that? Or do you feel that? And I was like, oh, my God, okay, I'm not crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It too. And, you know, two days later, I mean, we went out the night. that We went out. We shot pool. We had a good night. We got home. All of a sudden, he sneaks over and grabs a gun and goes and shoots himself randomly. You know, and it's like people ask you, well, well why do you think they did it? Well, I can I can tell people 150. 50% why I did it because there was heavy demonic activity going on around me, you know, and mm -hmm. I can't, I can't feel, feel guilty or, or, or anything like that because I didn't, I didn't know any better. And, and he was the love of my life. And, and if I would have known then what I know now, things, things would have been a lot different, you know, but God allows us to experience certain things so that we can share 
with other people in hopes of, of bringing them into the truth. Yeah, definitely. That That's so sad, Stephanie. I'm so sorry to hear that. And, you know, I, I, I just I agree with you. My mother, she took her life simply because she was a medium and she was tormented by yes. spirits. And she did actually give her life to Christ but at that point I had just become a Christian too and the Christian church I went to had no experience of these things and you know just didn't know how to help and it was only after my mother killed herself that I herself that I discovered there's such a thing as deliverance ministry that Christians can cast out demons and if I'd known that then and got her help you know I do believe she'd still be alive today so like yourself I realize there's a lot of people around the world going through this who feel suicidal basically because they've told me you know they've been through that and that's why just so keen to let people know Jesus is the answer and that he's the only one that can set you free from spiritual attack he is amen he he is he is the one and only answer to any of this spiritual demonic hell you know that's here on earth um, Satan comes as an angel of light, but a non-believer can contest this and see, you know, when they, if you're sensing spirits and they start coming, say the name of Jesus out loud. And I guarantee you that Satan's going to run. They cannot stand. They believe in Jesus. The demons believe in Jesus. They don't yeah. believe in Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and they will run from him and it'll just prove to him right there that, you know, Satan's not God. He's not at all. Jesus was God, and Jesus reigns over all the demonic realm. He he defeated them, you know, when he died on the cross and he rose again. It unleashed, and when he rose again, it unleashed his, uh, the Holy Spirit of of the living sovereign God, the creator of the universe. It released his Holy Spirit onto earth, and that's why John 3.16, 3, you know, this is just shedding light basically on that passage. When, when we accept Christ, that Holy Spirit that was unleashed by Jesus Christ, we ask him to come into our heart and the Holy Spirit literally comes into us, literally comes into our hearts. And that's how, um, you know, because when I was saved, God, God told me I didn't I didn't know that Jesus was real at that time. And I, I just I fell to my face one day. I, I couldn't take the, the mental and spiritual and just emotional torture that the demons were putting me through. I, I couldn't take it anymore. I was about to kill myself as well. I just I didn't know what to do. So I fell to my face in the shower and I said, God, who are you? Help me. You know, help me. I'm about to kill myself. Help me. And God told me and I asked him for forgiveness for what I had done, praying to multiple gods. And, you know, I had previously um I I'd previously had two abortions and, and God had shed light on, on the reality and the horrible things that I had, I'd had been doing, but I was deceived. I didn't know any better at the time. And, yeah. and God had shed light on that. So when I fell to my face, I asked him for forgiveness and, and I just sought him with my whole heart and soul because it was just, it was that, or either God was going to take a hold of my life or I was going to take my own life because I mean, the demonic, just influence I invoke through practicing witchcraft and sorcery and the new age and all that stuff. It just, it was hell on earth for me. And, and when I gave my life to God by seeking him like that, he told me, you know, he never condemned me. He, he told me to rise in Christ and, you know, he gave me the Holy spirit at that point because he gave me revelation of who Jesus Christ was. And Jesus Christ was God. <laughs> he yeah. was God incarnated into the flesh. And, you know, and, and ever since it's, it's, it's been really, it's been a, it's a blessing. You know, I used to, I used to make fun of Christians because I didn't understand their faith and their belief, but I couldn't understand why they would want to submit themselves to God or not, you know, guide their own life or, or why they would praise and worship God. And it just seems so out of this world because it, it really, in a way it really is because Jesus there, you know, God's kingdom is not in this world, you know, they're in the third heaven and it's like, I don't know. It, it's been really amazing that salvation and, and the process of sanctification through the Holy spirit, you know, being guided spiritually by God is, it, it's just, 
there's no words to it except for, you know, it, it makes you humble and it makes you grateful and it makes you want to praise him. Like you, once you give your life to God and he takes over, it's like you don't have to fight those demonic battles and the emotional yeah. and mental battles anymore. You know, you allow God to fight those for you. So it's like you happily praise him. <laughs> yeah, know? absolutely. <laughs> And it's like, I was kind of thinking there as you spoke, it's like, you know, this is the true enlightenment, finding Jesus Christ. He is the truth. He is the, the light. You know, you know, he is that he is the way to be enlightened, not by New Age techniques, but by Christ himself. That's right. Re these religions, these false religions and, and the New Age, they're, it's like you're seeking you're seeking enlightenment and you're seeking a deeper knowledge of the spiritual. And, and once you accept Christ and you get the Holy Spirit, you get the absolute truth. I mean, you get the ultimate enlightenment. You get the spirit of the living God inside of you, speaking to you in different ways and guiding you into a path that is not only beneficial for you, but then you're enabled to help other people, like truly, because like you said in your a testimony of yours I was watching earlier it's like a lot of psychic mediums and, and new agers and uh, spiritual healers and things of that sort They're, most of them are really good natured people you know they, they desire to help other people and that's really their main purpose of even doing what they do um, so, you know but they're not they don't have the power to help other people because they're, they're fighting in the same the same battle as everyone else. You know, God pulls you out of this world in a, in a spiritual way, you know, and gives you his Holy Spirit because only God, God is the only wise one. And he is the only one that can actually truly um, lead people to what they're looking for, which is the truth. And, you know, like you said, Jesus is the truth. He's the only way. God, God, he's not confusing like like the new age and all that other stuff is. There, there's true simplicity in Christ, and, and God will never confuse you with things. That All the confusion and leading you to destruction and all that other stuff, that's all of, that's all of Satan. Amen. And, and you know, I, I liked what you said there, Stephanie, that often I, I emphasize that too, that, you know, I do what I do because... I care about spiritualists and mediums and, and truth seekers and I'm not saying they're bad people, not at all. Um, you know, my mother and I were involved in it and, and it's just that we happen to be deceived by lying spirits and it's not the people I'm against in any way, it's the spiritual forces, you know, that are lying to them. That's right, that's right. And so did you find when you came to Christ, um, you obviously you must have realized at, at some point that when the, the so-called dead spirits, you know, dead relatives, spirit guides stopped coming to you, you would have realized, hey, the Bible was right after all when it said the dead can't return and, and that it's actually demons masquerading as the dead. Oh yeah, when I when I got the Holy Spirit in me, it wasn't actually until about three weeks later that I bought a, a King James Version Bible and opened it up. Um, but the Holy Spirit had been speaking to my spirit um, that entire time, and so I prayed and I said, "God, you know, what do you want to show me in the Bible?" And I opened it up, and the very first passage that I ever read was Ephesians six twelve: "For we wrestle not against flesh and blood." <laughs> And I went, oh, my goodness. <laughs> and it was just such a relief to me because I was like, wow, you know, this is real. That God is speaking directly to me, <laughs> you know, and he understands what, I, what I've been through. And, and you know, it, it's truly amazing when you have the Holy Spirit and you read the scriptures, you just it resonates with with you on such a deep level that it, it, the word Christianity is doesn't even come close to the actual depths of, of a true just heartfelt just you know soul revivaling relationship that, that God gives you when he gives you his Holy Spirit he shows you the things of this world and things of spiritual um, nature that we couldn't even think of to seek when we were you know in the new age dealing with the devil <laughs> 
absolutely. And, and I don't know about you, but I found one of the first things that happened to me, apart from all the demons moved out very dramatically, um, but apart from that, just such a, a peace that I'd never known in my life before, even though, you know, the New Age would promise peace, but the peace that comes from Jesus is totally out of this world. Oh, absolutely. God's peace that surpasses all understanding. It's a, because when you become a Christian and you get the Holy Spirit, um, the world doesn't necessarily change. You know, things start changing progressively through the process of him sanctifying us. But, you know, you still, we're still, we're still human. We still have to live in the flesh and, and, um, I kind of just got off track there. Sorry. <laughs> so they're staring at this piece of paper talking about, uh, I took some notes last night, but um, uh, yes, yeah, God's peace that surpasses all understanding. Like the world around you doesn't really change that much. You have to deal with, with the same things, but you just, you have this solid, just rock of a foundation when you have Jesus and the Holy Spirit inside of you to the point that the things that you were still dealing with the, were the same. You, you see them differently and you deal with them differently and they don't affect you like they used to. Um, you know, I mean, uh, just for a, an intense example, I mean, I used to deal with demons all the time. Well, demons are here every day. You know, they're all around us in the world, but they can no longer, they can't come into me. Mm -hmm. I'm fully protected, you know, I'm covered by the blood of Jesus, and I, can, I can't I can be possessed. I'm not vulnerable like that anymore. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of an, an extreme example, but um, I guess not really, because I guess any, anyone is subjected to that, so. Yeah, absolutely, and, you know, it's like, uh, yeah, I agree with you, and as before, I, I was, you know, attacked by spirits, but Sometimes people say, well, when you become a Christian, did those spirits still try and contact you? Um, did they still appear pretending to be your dead gran, whatever? No, they didn't. You know, they knew once I'd come to Christ and once Christians cast them out of my house and out of my body, that I wouldn't ever entertain them again. So they didn't even try and come and give me a message from the dead. You know, they just knew that that I, my eyes had been opened and that I knew the truth and I think as well it's so humbling when you realise that the psychic abilities that, that Satan gave us were just a complete counterfeit of, of the Holy Spirit gifts and that Christians can have the gifts of healing, the gifts of prophecy and obviously Satan was just trying to attract us with similar gifts but in the dark way. Oh yeah, absolutely. Satan's kingdom is a is a complete counterfeit to God's kingdom. Um, so the things that that spiritualists and mediums are seeking, um, there's truth to it, but you'll get absolute truth, and your your giftings that you're naturally trying to practice um, when you get the Holy Spirit, you know, all the confusion about it and all that other stuff that is cleared out, and God God will use you to help other people, you know, our passions and our, our desires to, uh, you know, things like that. God puts that, God's the one that, that put that in us in the first place. And, and God will, will satisfy that, that desire within you to use a, a spiritual gifting that you may have. Um, they're in the book of, let's see, first Corinthians, um, first Corinthians 12, I believe names the, the, the spiritual gifts that are available to any and every Christian. Um, some have one gift, some have multiple gifts. Um, you know, it's just, it, God will give you what you ask for when you're a Christian. And, and um, he actually encourages us to seek the best gifts, the, the prophetic gifting and, and things of that nature, because that opens you up to be a vessel for God to use. You know, the Christian body of Christ is God's hands and feet on this world. And he is, um, you know, I noticed a, a similarity between Christianity and the New Age and uh, Luciferianism. The commonality between them all is the word manifestation. Uh -huh. You know, we're all trying to manifest something, but there's there's two sides to the war. You know, there's God's kingdom and there's Satan's kingdom. And the only way to manifest the Holy Spirit of God is through the acceptance of Jesus Christ and his sacrifice and, and receiving the Holy Spirit. 
you know, Luciferianism and the New Age and all that other stuff, that's a manifestation of demonic, of demonic stuff. Um, and it'll, it'll come as, as light and love, but that's only to trick you into doing whatever Satan wants you to do. But like you said, when you get the Holy Spirit, those, those demons move on because they, they never cared about us in the first place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. And, mm-hmm. and I think as well, you know, sometimes when, when New Agers or, or mediums hear us say, you know, all that comes from Satan, obviously the, their first reaction is, don't be so ridiculous that Satan doesn't exist. And, you know, what a horrid thing to say. But when you consider that, that New Agers and mediums and those at the top, the top of, of those teachings do believe that Lucifer is God, that Lucifer is light and that all psychic powers come from Lucifer, then what we are saying is just a few more steps along the line there. You know, Lucifer did become Satan. It's not such a big jump to, to you know, believe that if you already believe in Lucifer. That we are just saying, well, yeah, he did fall and he did become Satan like the Bible says. Yeah, that, that's right. And and they say that it's ridiculous to, to speak about God and Satan, but yet, I mean, they're dabbling in the spiritual realm. So where do they think that, you know, spiritualism comes from? Um, you know, God, it says in John four twenty four that God is a spirit. <laughs> you know, like it, it, they can't they can't dabble in the spiritual realm and claim that there's not light and dark good and evil god and satan you know uh, it's it's and then call christians hypocrites you know because the mirror needs to be held up because that belief and that statement in itself is hypocrisy i mean you can't dabble in the spiritual realm and not believe that there aren't two um counter forces working against each other Mm um yeah yeah definitely and how would you Stephanie, if if anyone's listening who is in the New Age or Occult or into ghost hunting or anything like that, what would you say to them just now? I would tell them to stop. Stop it. And um, because ghosts are demons. And if you go seeking them out, you're going to get what you're looking for, but you're going to, you, you're probably going to get a lot more than what you were looking for. Um, I used to be fascinated with ghosts and, you know, contacting the dead and things like that. And, you know, when the veil was lifted from my eyes, I saw it for what it was. And they are demons. Satan's kingdom is, is I mean, it's just, it's like a grid all over this earth. And, um, you know, the Bible states 15 different times that Satan is the God of this age. He's the God of this world right now. And his kingdom is on earth right now. So um, just, I wouldn't go seeking it out um, because you, you will invoke and just, you will invoke entities that will wreak havoc in your life. And not to mention that if you have children, um, you're subjecting them to hell basically. And children are especially are very sensitive, you know, and with and empathetic to things like that. Yeah, so yeah. I just I would stay away from it. And you know, if, if they think that a, an entity or a spirit is coming to them, and that they're not there to harm them or, or whatever, just say the name of Jesus. Just try it, even if you don't believe. Try it. Say the name of Jesus around those entities, and I guarantee they're not they're not going to be too happy with it. All of a sudden, this angel of light turns pretty nasty and shows itself for what it is. Exactly. That that really is the key, isn't it? The Bible says, test the spirits. Um, right. Yeah, in the name of Jesus Christ, they, they suddenly start acting pretty wild and you realize they weren't such the good spirit they were claiming to be mm-hmm. af- after all. And what would you say, Stephanie, to Christians who are perhaps have some new age new age friends or, or work colleagues, how, how would you say they can can chat to them and reach out to them? I would pray for them um, because our, our, our battle isn't against flesh and blood and, and I, I would pray for them and, and be guided by the Holy Spirit on what to do or what to say to that individual person because everybody's unique in, in their own path um, in life and 
you know, if I would have had somebody come quote scripture to me, you know, when I was in the new age, I, I wouldn't even have listened to them, you know. Actually, I did have one person <laughs> quote scripture to me, and they and they told me that the Bible said that we are gods, <laughs> you know. But if I would have went in there and looked for myself, I would have saw that that was Satan talking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, he was telling Eve that, you know, the garden. But um, I would just I would pray because we can't we can't battle a spiritual battle. Um through carnal minded things. There, there's not much that we can say to a person that is deep into the occult or, or digging into that stuff because their their belief, their firm belief, they think it's okay at the time. So and Satan is gonna do what do whatever it takes to manipulate that person into continuing in what they're doing. So a Christian needs to battle from the heavenly realms, which is getting and praying in the spirit, you know, giving the father thanks and, and giving him praise and, you know, continuing that until you just feel his glory all over and all around you. And then, then start praying because then your prayers are effective. That's when you, you make the spirit move and you can actually start doing battles and, and getting these demons off of, off of your friends and, and, and whatnot. And, um, asking the Holy Spirit to to show open those people's eyes. So prayer in the spirit is a Christian's number one weapon. Um, you know, I guess you can't really put them in order, but yeah. just uh, but number two, I mean, the sword of the spirit, the word of God. That's um, and I see a lot of Christians in the body of Christ. I've seen many of them straying away from the Bible. You know, thinking that they don't need it. They can only be guided by the Holy Spirit. And, it, you know, God composed the Bible. It's there for a reason. It is there for our benefit to um, to just chop down all these false truths and whatnot. Because I've seen a lot of Christians actually slipping into the New Age teachings themselves and not knowing any better. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, it's, it's really interesting you saying that. Stephanie, because um, I was just thinking sometimes we feel we should go and talk to people, we should give them scripture, but prayer is number one, and oftentimes even just praying for them, they might even come to you and say, you know, I feel I should come and ask you to pray for me, and it's not always about going in there and, and hitting people with, with scriptures. That's right, that's right. And could you, we're almost at the end now, Stephanie, could you please tell listeners uh, the title of your uh, book and where they can purchase it? Uh, yes, uh, the title of my book, it's an ebook available on am Amazon.com and it's called Christianity Decoded. And that has your testimony in it? It has my testimony in it and it's got um, some things exposing the truth about Freemasonry and Catholicism and the hierarchies um, that are running those deceptions um yeah it's not very long it only takes about 90 minutes to sit down and read through it it's the first book um i'm writing a second one that's going to um go further into depth of, of the different chapters in there but it also speaks about um the mixture of paganism and christianity kind of like we were just talking about the the new age movement and how it's infiltrated the christian churches <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i really must buy that myself I really should read that I'm looking forward to to getting it and also um just to to let listeners know you have a YouTube interview with Rob Rennie of New York and that is on his YouTube channel Eternal Planner yes yes that it the Holy Spirit really really came through on that video on that testimony um but yes you can check out eternalplanner.com and my interview on there is called Former Psychic Medium, Here's God, and it says Rising Christ. Um, but, yes, the Holy Spirit took over that interview, and it's it's really powerful to the point that we recorded that over a year ago, and I still watch it to this day, and I still learn from it. So I know that it wasn't entirely me speaking through that that, that testimony video because I'm, I'm still learning things from it. So, yeah. Um, I encourage anyone who's who's curious about, you know, Christianity and the truth about the New Age movement and the occult. I encourage you definitely, definitely go watch that. And um, 
And if anyone out there has any questions and would like to contact me, I will help you however however I can. My email address is stephaniefruge at hotmail.com. And that's S-T-E-P-H-A-N-I-E-F-R-U-G-E at hotmail.com. And I welcome anyone to contact me. That's wonderful. And, and you're also on, on Facebook too. And I'll put those details on my blog so that if people miss it just now, they can go check it out on my blog and, and, and get in touch with you. Okay, great. Thank you so much. That was wonderful, Stephanie. I really, really enjoyed speaking with you and, and, and listening to everything you had to share. And could you, just in closing, could you please pray for listeners, listeners, just as you feel led to? I would love to. I would love to. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, I, I thank you and I praise you. I thank you, Father, for every single listener tuning into this. Um, I pray that you just send your Holy Spirit, God. Convict their hearts. Convict their hearts and have them lead them to your truth, God. Just lead them into your truth. Bring them into your kingdom. Show them the truth about your son, Jesus Christ, and his sacrifice and the power and the, the peace that you want, to, you want to bring to these people's lives. Give them your peace, Father, and lead them in the right direction. And we thank you, Father, that your word says that no weapon will form against us shall prosper. And, Father, I thank you for Laura and her ministry, and I ask you to increase your anointing on her and her ministry because she is, she is working really hard for your kingdom. And we want to harvest in souls into your kingdom. That's part of our job, God, and we, we invite your Holy Spirit to just work in our lives and, and touch these people that are listening right now and just bring them to the truth and bring them out of darkness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Stephanie. It was just so lovely to speak with you today. I'm so excited to talk to you today. I, I've so been looking forward to talking to you. I think I just think you're a wonderful person and you're you're a true blessing to the body of Christ and to anyone who comes in contact with you. Thank you so much for having me. Well, that's lovely. I feel the same way about you. And I was just so excited you were coming on the show because, you know, I saw your, your video last year and I've really been looking forward to speaking with you. Well, thank you so much. And, and I'd love to talk to you again. Yes, I hope that we definitely will do that again. So, um, yeah, it's just been a pleasure. Thank you so much. And I hope that the listeners were all encouraged today. And please do check out Stephanie's book and YouTube video. And also please tune in again next time for another powerful testimony. God bless you all and thank you. The preceding program was made possible by kind donations from the listeners to Eternal Radio, for which we are very grateful. It takes a great deal of time and resources to prepare, produce, record, and broadcast our programs to listeners in over 60 countries around the world. Our potential audience is much larger, and Eternal Radio can now be heard all around the world, online, on tablet, on smartphone, and on TV. If you would like to help us continue broadcasting sounds to energize your faith, together with the message of God's love for all mankind around the world, please prayerfully consider making a donation. From your mobile phone, simply text ELCM02, followed by your donation preference of £3, £5 or £10 to 70070. Thank you for listening.